which everybody knows Eeyore is just simply a depressed Optimus Prime, right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's basically... Oh, All right, my. Megatron. <laughs> you can take over the world. <laughs> Nothing ever happens to me. <laughs> It's all my fault. <laughs> if only I could find the AllSpark. <laughs> Here we go. Transformers, if you want. Transform. Autobots, roll out. <laughs> but they probably won't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Hardwick. Welcome to the Nerdist Podcast. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm Ian, and we all know why we're here. No introduction, sorry, no introduction needed. Please give a warm applause for Mr. Peter Cullen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is, without a doubt, so honest to say this, so great to be back on Canadian soil, to be with wonderful Canadians. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Bon, a prochain, let's begin. All right. So the way this is going to work is what happened is we asked you through our various uh, websites, social media channels, everything like that, for some questions to be submitted. We've actually selected a few questions, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask if the person who submitted the question is here. Um, then you're going to be permitted to actually ask your question. We're going to bring you the sheet, and we're just going to, there are certain ones that are highlighted. Please ask answer, or please ask the highlighted question. So first of all, is there a Jonathan Boetto here? All right, here Come we go. Come on down. <laughs> okay, hey sir. Thanks How for you coming. doing? Pretty good. My question, uh, Optimus Prime has become a role model for leadership, like few other characters in pop culture. Do you feel a responsibility to maintain that model? And have there ever been instances throughout any of the TV shows or movies where you felt the need to alter the script in order to do so? Uh, very good question. And um, yes, I do. I feel uh, a great responsibility to, to Optimus Prime. He was well-conceived, brilliantly written, and uh, I owe a lot. My entire future back in 1984 was based on a character called Optimus Prime. Bud Budiansky is probably one of the unsung heroes in Transformers. Not too many people realize that Bud is the genius behind the conception, part of that. And he created a character that had so many qualities that uh, over a period of time, I could begin to feel the necessity for being true to those ideals. And um, I still feel that way today. I've been challenged, um, not during the animated portion of my career with Prime, but more in the um, feature film. And uh, I had one major battle, and that was the use of a line that I thought was completely out of character. 
and I, I don't even want to say the line, but it had nothing to do with uh, it had nothing to do with the military or anything like that. It was it was just the idea of modern day violence seeping its way into you know the colloquial everyday usage of violence and uh, and it was so out of character but nonetheless I was told to say it so I expressed my disdain and my uh, reluctance to say the line but uh, I've never had to do that again so I won <laughs> All right, next up we have a question from Dylan G. Oh. So uh, Dylan, if you want to make your way on up here. It's Ninja Tron. Hello. Hello. So Transformers is full of uh, spaceships and lasers and all kinds of science fiction type stuff. Did you have any knowledge or interest in that kind of material before becoming involved in Transformers? And uh, how does your experience as an actor help you to work with some of these outer-worldly concepts that normal humans might have a hard time with? Wow. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. Um, back in 1969, when man uh, landed on the moon, I was in Montreal, and I was watching it on television. And uh, I was amazed. I was really amazed. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Man going to the moon, oh my. I developed such a love for NASA and anything related to space back in those days. And it continued on. And by the, uh, the good fortune of Optimus Prime, Transformers, that led me to NASA itself and uh, Goddard Space Flight Center, where I just returned from. I was in Washington for that, for the Optimus Prime Spinoff Awards. And uh, well, it's, it's very exciting. You ought to look into it. I, I do a lot of work with Goddard, but I tell you, and for, with NASA, and uh, to, see, to see these young kids, you know, from five to seven years old coming up with videos that uh, show the innovations that have come out of the NASA program for man, but originally conceived for the protection and safety of mankind going into outer space. Thousands of inventions that we take for granted every day. So to be a part of that spinoff award uh, got me close to astronauts and to rocket launches down in Florida, and uh, I'm a spoiled little brat. <laughs> All right, so uh, next up we have a question from Michael Passer. Is there a Michael Passer here? Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and read his question if he's not here. Okay, uh, my 10-year-old son has a few questions in, in hopes to submit, one for Mr. Cullen. And the one we've selected is, how did you come up with the original voice for Optimus Prime? Uh, it's a story that I've told many times, and maybe some of you have heard it, but it's a story very dear to me, and it's the truth. It happened. My brother Larry, a captain in the Marine Corps, had returned from Vietnam. He was a decorated uh, Marine, and uh, the uh, Bronze Star with V and a couple of Purple Hearts. And we were sharing an apartment, going through a difficult time in my life, when Larry came down, and it was in about 1984, and we were as I said, living in an apartment together. And he would always uh, take a little interest in where I was going every day, because I, I was a, well, a grunt, as the Marines would say. You know, if you're a ground trooper, you're a grunt. Anyway, Larry's uh, 13 months older, five inches taller. And, uh, but we're 13 months apart. We were very, very close. So he said, Peter. Where are you going today? He said, 
well, Larry, uh, what, you need the car? He said, no, no, I just uh, want to know where you're going. I said, I'm going to audition. I'm going to be, um, I'm auditioning uh, as a truck. <laughs> he did the same thing. And so I, I said, but Larry, he's a, uh, Evidently, he's a hero truck. He's a real, I mean, he's a hero. And his face got somber, and he said, Peter, if you're going to be a hero, be a real hero. Don't be a Hollywood hero type with all the BS and all the yelling and screaming and trying to be tough. Be strong enough to be gentle. Well, Kalar, yeah. So as his voice is ringing in my ears as I'm driving to the audition, and I read the copy, and Larry is just coming out, his voice, the way he talked to me. And it said, you know, I'm Optimus Prime. <laughs> no, it was, my name is Optimus Prime. And the softness in his adver advisory tone was, was significant. And so I, uh, the words just rolled off my tongue. I'm from the planet Cybertron. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I, I kind of finished it and said, and said, OK, thank you very much, uh, Peter. OK. So, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, I, I walked out and uh, getting into the car and I said, I wish Larry had been here. You know, I, I think he would have been proud of me because I, I think I nailed it. I really think I've nailed the character because it was just Larry. And two weeks later, my agent called me up and said, oh, Peter, remember that Transformers thing, the truck? And he said, yeah. He said, you got the part of Optimus Prime. I said, I do? He says, ah, yeah, and you also have another part called Ironhide? What, 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 what's this Ironhide? I said, <laughs> so, so that was the beginning. That was the launch. Did that answer the question, do you think? I, I think it answered the question.